First things first, check your local laws to make sure you can safely build this project before you begin. Many local fire laws prohibit the use of plastic sheeting in haunted house props and structures. It is up to you to research your own laws before building a project like this. I am not responsible for any fines, arrests, damages, injuries, or deaths resulting from your project. Now that we've got all the legal mumble jumbo out of the way, let's get started. You're going to want to find a good location for your tunnel, preferably somewhere with even ground and somewhat protected from the wind. The finished tunnel will measure about 13 feet wide and 6.5 feet tall. The length can really be as long as you want. Ours was 60 feet. The tunnel supports are constructed as shown with 10 foot lengths of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. The supports should be no greater than 5 feet apart, otherwise the connecting pipes will sag and the overall structure will be very weak. Use a hacksaw or pipe cutter to cut the 10 foot pipes in half to create the support separators. It's a good idea to draw the entire project out, to scale if possible. And there's nothing worse than having to make repeated trips to the hardware store in the middle of a project like this, so make a detailed shopping list. When you have all the necessary parts, it's time to begin assembly. Start by assembling the entire middle spine of the structure. A T-connector should be press fit on the ends, and four-way connectors should be used every five feet to attach the arch supports. Once you have the spine built to the length you want, begin adding the 10-foot pipes for the arch supports. Do not use any glue, just press fit everything for now. It may help to smack the end of each pipe with a rubber mallet to make sure they seat properly. Continue press fitting the remainder of the PVC arch supports. Drill a small pilot hole and thread a short screw into the fitting for each joint. This will make each joint what I like to call temporarily permanent. Drive a piece of one half inch rebar into the ground three and a half feet from the end of each arch support. Working on one arch support at a time, have a friend help you bend the PVC pipe supports and insert the ends into the rebar. Get creative with your exit doorway. We put ours to the side and made the terrified customers try to find their way out. Next, you want to drill a small hole through every other support, about two to three feet from the ground. Tie a bright colored high strength nylon string or twine to each hole to act as guy wires to hold the structure to the ground. Tie the ends to landscaping stakes and pound them into the ground with a mallet or a hammer. Try to keep the guy wires out of the main traffic areas in and around your tunnel to prevent tripping your customers and the monsters. If you think you have too many guy wires, you probably don't, especially if you are in an area prone to high winds and storms. We used a roll of 20 foot by 100 foot, 4.5 mil black plastic sheeting. To hold the sheeting in place, we used snap clamps and grip clamps. The grip clamps were used to secure the plastic on the bottom of each arch support for extra strength. Plastic zip ties were used around the rest of the snap clamps to hold them in place. Carefully unroll the plastic and fit it to the structure, installing clamps on one arch support at a time. Be sure to leave plenty of plastic at the front and rear of the tunnel, and then trim the excess. You may have to temporarily disconnect some of your guy wires so you can thread them through holes in your plastic sheeting. Oh, and here's a word of warning that comes from experience. When putting the plastic sheeting on your tunnel, get at least one other person to help you, and do not try to do it on a windy day. To construct the exit door, fasten several layers of leftover plastic to the top of the doorway and cut slits in the plastic all the way down, freezer strip style. This helps to block out exterior light but still allows for air to flow through the tunnel. We constructed a simple facade with a doorway that leads into the tunnel. This was done by burying and tamping 2x4s into the ground for the structural support. The sheeting is quarter inch scrap plywood that we had previously used for a different project. We used screws to fasten everything together. A couple quick coats of black paint and some scary neon spray graffiti adds a bit of a terrifying feel to the entrance of the tunnel. Of course, no haunted attraction is complete without visual effects and a killer sound system. We added a laser vortex and a fog machine inside the tunnel. The loud space vortex sound effect completes the overall effect. 
My camera would not capture very good video, therefore the laser does not show up very well. However, combined with the tunnel, fog, and sound effects, it was actually a very terrifying experience. Thanks for watching. Be safe and happy haunting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>